If you go on Google Translate and typed in 跑 you get run. But if you type in 跑步 you also get run. If you type in 吃 you get eat. But if you type in 吃饭 you still get eat. And if you typed in 帮 you get help. 帮助 is also help. 帮忙 still gets you help. There's nothing wrong with Google Translate, but there is something wrong with this sentence. 我来帮了 I came to help. In this video, let's figure out why Chinese verbs need an object. To be fair, it's not that verbs in Chinese always need an object. 跑吃 and 帮 do mean run, eat, and help, but can be limited in how they are used. The reason these words are so special is because they belong to a group of words called separable verbs. 离合词 In a separable verb, the first character is a verb and the second character is an object, or in other words, a noun. Remember that an object in grammar is the thing a verb acts on, and as the name implies, these verbs can be separated. But I'll discuss that later. So, 跑步 means to run, where 跑 is the verb meaning run, and 步 is the object meaning steps. But to help make my explanation more clear, let me use a different name for this structure. I'm going to call the verb character by itself the action, and the verb plus object pair the activity. So 跑 would be an action, and 跑步 would be an activity. So what's the difference between the action and the activity? As you saw with Google Translate, they seem to mean the same thing in English. Well, first of all, that's because I purposely chose examples where they come out to the same translation in English. But more importantly, it's because they do mean different things in English too. But the difference is not clearly expressed in English. So here are the differences. The action form of a verb only describes a mere action or motion that occurs. For example, pao is the mere action of running, the thing you do to move quickly somewhere. The activity form of a verb describes an intentional action, usually done to accomplish a goal or purpose. For example, pao bu is the activity of running, where you purposely run a certain distance for recreation or fitness purposes. So knowing that, let's see how this plays out in a sentence. This sentence, 我喜欢在公园跑步 means I like to run at the park, or more naturally, I like to jog at the park, referring to jogging as a form of exercise. Remember, this is with the activity form of the verb. If we omit the object, then we get 我喜欢在公园跑 This is with the action form of the verb, and would technically mean the same thing. I like to run at the park. But what this would sound like to a native Chinese speaker is that you like to run around at the park, but maybe you're not running laps or have a specific aim. You're simply running. A better English translation for this sentence might be, "I like to run around at the park." The same thing applies to 吃 versus 吃饭 The action form 吃 refers to the physical process of eating, whereas the activity form 吃饭 refers to having a meal. In real speech, you would use 吃 if you're talking about something that happened. Like 我把饼干吃掉了 I ate the cookie. Notice that this sentence has an object, the cookie. So that's another hint you would use the action form of the verb. But if you are talking about the activity of eating, you have to include the object. 我正在吃饭 I'm eating right now, or I'm having a meal right now. In the last video, I asked you if you knew the difference between 帮助 and 帮忙 In this video, I'll give you the answer. These two words are actually not the same structure because 帮助 is a regular verb with two syllables. It's a double root word where both characters are verbs. So this means that in most cases you'll still need to have an object. An example sentence would be 我可以帮助你 I can help you. Here, you is the object the verb is acting on. What about 帮忙 Well, this word is a separable verb, so 帮 is the verb and 忙 is the object. If you're confused on how mong, an adjective meaning busy, can be an object, here's a little secret. It acts as a noun in this word, meaning something like busyness, work, or progress. So bang mong means to help with something you're working on or towards. Here's the key difference: because an object is already included in the verb, no additional object is necessary. So you can say something like, 我来帮忙了 I came to help. To understand why this all works the way it does. Let me remind you of the lesson from the last video: that a Chinese character is a unit of idea that can be manipulated and combined with other characters to create new ideas. So when you combine a one-character verb with different objects, its meaning can change. 
Earlier, I told you I purposely chose examples where the English translation is the same between the action form and activity form, but now, let me show you examples where they are different. Let's take the action verb so, meaning to make or do. It can function by itself, like in this sentence, 你想做什么? What do you want to do? But it can also combine with 饭, food, to mean cook, 做饭. If it combines with 梦, dream, then you get the verb to dream, 做梦. So you can see how attaching a different object to a verb can drastically change the meaning of the original verb, especially when the original meaning is pretty broad. But did you know you can also do the opposite? You can pair different verbs with the same object to create a range of vivid words with similar meanings. For example, instead of saying 做饭, you can say 煮饭, boil food. Instead of 做作业, do homework, you can say 写作业, write homework. However, I will caution you against okay. overanalyzing these words literally. What I mean is that if someone says 煮饭, it doesn't necessarily mean they will boil food, they are just cooking. If someone is doing homework on a computer, they can still say they are 写作业. They don't have to be strictly writing to use that word. So this leads us to the main point of this video. When do you need the object and when is it fine to omit it? To decide this, ask yourself, is a verb a mere action or an intentional activity? Are you talking about just the physical movements or doing something with a purpose? If you're just talking about an action, then you don't need the object. But if you're describing an activity, then you do need the object. Now do you see why I chose to use these words when talking about separable verbs? If we use our first example, Paul, this verb to run can be an activity or a mere action. If I say something like, the man immediately ran to his boss's office, the verb only functions to describe the action of running. So in Chinese, we would use Paul by itself. However, if the running is an intentional action, not a means of, say, going to your boss's office, then you would need to use the activity form. So if you want to say, I enjoy running in the morning, the Chinese would be, 我喜欢早上跑步. Let's try another example with 读, read. Can you guess which of these sentences is the action and which is the activity? I am reading in my room right now. Or, I have read that book before. Okay, so the first sentence is the activity, and the second one is an action. Because the first sentence is describing the current activity you are engaging in, whereas the second sentence is simply stating a fact that happened. So, I am reading in my room right now would be, 我正在房间里读书. And I had read that book before would be, 我读过那本书. The last piece of this puzzle then is how can we separate these separable verbs? Let's talk about that now. It's not exactly complicated either. If you just treat the verb and object as separate words, you can add modifiers where they normally go. For example, this simple sentence, 我吵架, I quarrel, can become, 我吵过架, I've quarreled before. By the way, this is a common way to do past tense with separable verbs. The guo goes between the verb and object. You can lengthen it more with 我吵过许多不必要的家. I fought many unnecessary fights before. 许多不必要的 is an adjective phrase and it goes before the noun, which again is just normal grammar rules. I want to mention another very common thing to add to separable verbs, which is just the character 个, like in 我出去跑个步. As you probably know, ge is the universal classifier, and without a number in front, it just means one of. So using this expression is kind of like saying, I'll just go out for a quick jog. It makes the action seem quicker, smaller, or more casual. In addition, the object can also appear ahead of the verb in certain constructs. For example, 这个忙我帮不了 means, this task I can't help you with. But as I said, when a separable verb separates, it can almost just act as a verb and object with normal grammar rules. The tricky part is knowing how much you can separate them before it sounds unnatural, because there are some verbs that don't separate very well. As a general rule, the more independent and concrete the object, the more separable the verb. For example, liaotian literally translates to chat about the weather, but it really just means to chat randomly and not necessarily about the weather. So the noun tian is not very concrete, and this word is not very separable. Finshou literally means to separate hands, but again the noun here is not about the concrete hands, 
but an abstract idea for a couple breaking up, so it is also not very separable. However, words like 吃饭 to eat, 读书 to read, or 结婚 to marry have very clear objects that can act as independent nouns in the context of their respective verbs. 饭 is food, 书 is book, and 婚 is marriage. So these words are able to separate more easily. In this entire series, it has been my goal to show you the key differences between one and two character versions of the same word, or at least similar words. But there is still more to learn, especially with how separable words can be used in common speech. So I hope this video sparked your curiosity in this topic, but you'll have to continue learning to truly master it. I'm really thankful that you followed the series from beginning to end, and if you missed the last two videos, you'll be able to find them in the description. 我们下一次再见了，拜拜。